Hello and welcome to this month's Power Hour. This Power Hour session is, is presented by NexRev. We're a platinum value added reseller based out of Fremont, California. We provide training implementation and tech support for PTC Creo Parametric as well as other PTC software uh, products. We work mostly out of the West Coast, but we have customers in different parts of the country as well. My name is Urbano Spinoza. I'm an application engineer and instructor with NextRev. I've been working with PTC CAD tools since Pro Engineer Wildfire 4.0, so that puts me at starting work with those software tools at about 2008. Uh, my background includes work in the fields of drafting, computer aided design, and technical illustration. Now, as far as what we're covering today, we're going to cover large assembly management. We're going to look at some tools in Creo that help you manage large assemblies, help those assemblies load faster, and help your computer mo uh, manipulate those models more smoothly. We'll be looking at uh, using simplified representations and automatic representations, creating envelopes and shrink wraps specifically, and then we'll, follow, we'll talk about computer hardware suggestions that we have um, that can help, help you spec out a computer that will handle this uh, these assemblies better and then we'll look at configuration settings for Creo so Creo parametric is a highly configurable software lots of options that you can turn on and off or adjust and you can set these in a way that optimizes Creo for a large assembly management okay so let's start by talking about uh, the simplified representations and uh, automatic reps uh, so when working with large assemblies and talk and as far as talking to customers that we have who deal with large assemblies uh, the message that we've received is first off you wouldn't bother trying to open the whole thing with all the details just to get at what you need I've heard it tell from engineers that have worked at companies that use Creo uh, to build tractors and other vehicles that no one ever really bothers to open a complete top level fully detailed assembly it, the assemblies are so large that it's not practical. Um, we have customers where the, when they click open on a master assembly, and when I say master assembly, I mean all the components and all the features loaded up. It takes 20 to 30 minutes to load it up. And uh, trying to do simple tasks will slow down the computer to take a, a minute or two to regenerate each time, maybe even longer. And forget about drawings. If the drawing has the master representation, changing between sheets could take up to 15 minutes. And this is a very, very um, slow process to deal with. So um, rather than opening the whole assembly, what Creo users use at these companies is open simplified versions of the assembly using uh, what are called in Creo simplified representations. And what is a simplified representation? It's simply a version of the assembly file with items excluded, right? That you don't need to, so you've selectively uh, told Creo, I don't want to have these in session. Uh, also, not only can you exclude items, but you can uh, load uh, simple lightweight versions of, the, of those items instead. So instead of having all the features, maybe you just need the outside surfaces to give you a visual representation of what that item is. Okay, so for example, we have this uh, train assembly approaching 3,000 components, and here it is with everything loaded up. So instead of loading up this complete assembly, which you could do with, uh, as an example, is load up a simplified representation that looks something like this. Maybe you need to do some work on the passenger car and develop the um, the frame and if you do that you don't need all the components in detail in fact not only will they slow down the computer but they would uh, on a practical level obstruct your view so what you can do is load in a simplified representation that looks something like this where instead of having all the components with all their detail you have surfaces and some sketches and guides to help as you um, work on the specific task you're developing now if you do need a complete visual representation that's easy to look at, take some screenshots, make some measurements, uh, that's where something like an automatic representation comes into play. And in that case, what you're doing is you're loading a automatically created simple version with it's just lightweight external surfaces so that you can see the assembly 
but you don't have your it's not bogging the computer down with all the features now um, here in the snapshot or here in the slide you see that in the middle there's a tag that says light surface ID that appears when you hover your cursor over a surface and that's a hint that what you've loaded is an automatic rep um, now the reason it's called an automatic rep is because Creo automatically generates the simplified version but also because if you do need to make a measurement or work on a component right um, Creo can automatically load the necessary information to um, complete that measurement and then when you're done you can bring it back to a more simplified representation it'll uh, you can go ahead and remove that from memory so what I'll do first is I'll go ahead and go into uh, Creo to do a demonstration for starters on loading simplified representations. I'll be conducting this demo using Creo 5.0 and what I want to do first is go ahead and load in that train assembly. So first as an example we'll load in the master assembly and give a rough time. So that was roughly 20 seconds, something along those lines. Now, as you can see, we have the complete assembly and all the components loaded in. Now, that wasn't so bad in the grand scheme of things, but uh, imagine working on an assembly with even more components. It just gets, the wait time gets longer and longer and longer. So as an example, let's go ahead and compare that to loading on uh, loading up a simplified representation instead now how do you do that well uh, I'll go ahead and show you now typically what you would do if you're opening up an assembly the master you would simply double click on the file as you're browsing for it if you want to open up a simplified representation of that assembly instead you go to the open uh, button you browse to the assembly file we'll go ahead and select it but you don't click open right away instead here on the right there's a little uh, triangle button that if you click on it reveals a drop down menu and the third item from the top is open representation that lets you go to a menu where if there are simplified representations that have been created ahead of time you can pick from them and open those instead now, if there's none, I'll show, we'll go ahead and in this demo, we'll show you later on how to create those and save them. But here we have some already created. Now, if you want a preview of what this simplified representation will look like, there's a little button here on the side that you can click and use that to get a preview of what the simplified representation is going to look like. Okay, so if we zoom in here, we see that it's basically just one piece of the car right here we have a couple more that we can browse through but we'll use this demo star one go ahead and click open so that's done that took about roughly nine seconds so half the time And here we have our passenger cars that we can take a look at. All right, so if we want to, you know, work on one of these sub-assemblies, the car itself, we can do that. Uh, here's our representation menu again. We'll go ahead and open the master assembly in this case. And doing that, you can come in here and do work. Okay, so for example, we've got uh, this profile frame, and then we have a pattern here. You know, imagine that you did work there. Now, you can manipulate these simplified representations. So for example, you can come here, and if you right-click on subassemblies or components, there's a representation flyout, and you can invoke the master of it and then bring it in into session, right? So you can selectively bring in 
uh, items into the simplified rep. Here in the lower left, a little plus sign appears telling you that you've made a change to this demo start simplified rep that you uh, loaded in earlier. Uh, I'll show you later how you have the option to go back and save these changes or not. You know, it's up to you. So let's take a look at some uh, simpler assemblies to show you how to uh, different ways that you can create these, sub, uh, these simplified representations and use them. Okay, so uh, first thing that we want to cover is opening these files. So let's take a look at opening an assembly. Now, in the example I had, the train assembly, there were already simplified reps created there beforehand by other users. But that's not always the case. And maybe you don't want to load in a monstrous assembly and have to wait and then have to create it um, with the assembly in session. So one thing you can do is you can open a subset. So what does that mean? That means that you can be selective about what you open from the get-go, even before you um, load in the whole assembly. So let's go ahead and do that. Here we have a small engine assembly. I can click here on preview to take a look. Okay. So um, this time, instead of clicking the drop-down menu for representation, on the right of that, there's another button called Open Subset. What that does is it reveals a menu. And then this menu, it uh, shows you the model tree for the assembly with items, uh, little checkbox, uh, little boxes next to the components and subassemblies. And those are checkboxes. And if you select those, here on the right, you see a preview of what will be included in the subset that you're loading in. So you're basically choosing what it is you load in instead of all of the uh, assemblies and components. So you can be specific with sub-assemblies and then you can also, not having to worry about uh, parents, uh, parent-child relationships, you can go ahead and select components in different assemblies at the top level or in sub-assemblies as well. So, you know, for example, maybe we do um, want the crank and piston subassembly and then for whatever reason that uh, cylinder part as well and then when you click on open what happens is it loads up just what you selected in that subset uh, not only that but if you look down here in the lower left it's telling you that the master rep has been adjusted so this is uh, this is something that you've loaded on, and then you can save this specific arrangement for later use as a simplified representation. So let's take a look at how you could do that. Uh, the main place that you can go to manage your simplified representations is in the um, View Manager. So go ahead and click on that. And the View Manager has a simplified rep tab. And there it lists any simplified reps and that you create or that have already existed. Now we see that here next to the master rep, there's a little plus sign. So if you right click on that and click on save, you can give this representation a name, all right? This particular arrangement. It's always good to uh, give it a name that's either descriptive or that follows some kind of best practices um, arranged by your company. Okay, so we could leave it at rep one. So now if I double click on master rep, it's loaded in all the components. If I go back to rep 0001, it's just what I had. Now, um, toggling between simplified reps does not automatically clear the models from, from memory. So the moment I selected master rep, it loaded all the components in. When I toggled back to, rep, to the rep I created, it cleared the components from view, right? So they're not there, but they are still in memory. So just to show you, if you wanted to, um, let me close this right here. If you wanted to make sure that those components were cleared from memory, you would go to erase not displayed and make sure that you did that and cleared these components away right from, from your memory. Okay, so that's how you can load in uh, Simplify Reps using subsets. Now, how can you uh, edit these, right? So how can you do this on the fly? Well. Um, 
with whatever you have loaded in, you can, there's a number of ways. One way is to go to each individual component in the model tree, right click and look at representation. We did this earlier. You can exclude, you can select master, you can do automatic, right? So the moment you do something like uh, exclude, for example, the little plus sign appears next to rep001, and then you see how it's changed there. So, uh, the plus sign indicates that there's been a change. If you want to save that change, you can right click and select save, and it updates the simplified rep. Now, from this view manager, you can also right click and select redefine, and you get the menu that you saw earlier when we we're loading in subsets, and you can make uh, changes to your simplified rep from here as well. Let's go ahead and cancel that out. So some things you can do, you can go ahead and select items and put them into a representation. Um, let's go ahead and load in the master rep in this case. I want to show you some, some things you can do to uh, make adjustments to your simplified rep. So I'm going to close this example and open up another one. And we'll go ahead and open up this drill assembly that the engine is a sub-assembly of. Now, when you're selecting items to exclude, you can leverage using your search tool in Creo to select items in a group, right? So here I can look for components and I can search by a number of different criteria. In this case, we'll simply say using the name and then we'll say bolt. We're looking for all the bolts in this assembly. Now you see here that I get a list of all the bolts in the top level assembly. I can select them, all right? Now, something you can do here that's useful is you can go to options and select save query. And what that's gonna do for me is let me save my uh, search to a layer, all right? By doing it this way, I'm gonna close. When I go to my layer tree, there's a bolts layer and because I created the layer from a search, from a query, anytime I add a component that satisfies the search criteria, so anything with the name, well, it starts with any uh, part that starts with the name bolts, will be automatically added to the layer. So this makes it easier to uh, select items, right? Because the idea here is that now that if it's in your layer, you can right click, uh, say select items, right? Go back to your model tree, right click, and then set your representation to exclude. And then you can create or update a simplified rep using that layer. Now, every time you add a bolt, you will have to, it won't automatically be added to the simplified rep. So um, you will have to go back and update it, but you can create a specific type of simplified rep uh, using rules that will actually include that will actually uh, update on, uh, after you initiate the rule. So what do I mean by that? Let's go ahead and take a look here. So I'm double clicking on master rep to toss away the changes. Okay, and now I'm gonna create a um, simplified rep using rules. So we'll go ahead and call this uh, rules, maybe no bolts. Okay, so similar to before, we have all these items here, but uh, we have our uh, simplified rep editing uh, dialog box. What you could do is click on this drop down here and select edit rules. And here's where you define the rules that are going to de determine what is included and what's excluded in your simplified representation. So we can add a condition here, clicking on the plus side. There's actions, exclude, uh, master rep. So we'll select the condition, make it new, uh, say no bolts, or actually let's say bolts, right? And what happens is we get the search tool again. And the same thing, look for solid model, uh, preview the results. We'll click on OK. 
right? And so that rule, that condition 0001, is actually a search. And then this is going to tell it to exclude it. So we'll go ahead and evaluate it. It looks for it. Okay. Then we come back here. And let's go ahead and bring everything in. Evaluate the rules. Click open. And now we have a simplified representation that automatically looks for bolts and then excludes them. So let's look at an example here. We'll go ahead and assemble a bolt, put the generic in this case, and put it into the assembly. Now you see it's not automatically excluded. We have to go to our view manager, uh, go to edit and evaluate model rules. And when we do that, the simplified rep looks around the model and then includes the bolt. Okay, so you can create simplified rep with rules and then when you load in your assembly, make changes, evaluate the rules and it'll update the simplified rep that you created. Now, these simplified reps that you create get added to this simplified rep tab and then when you go to open a representation, they're added to the list. A couple of other notes. Here you'll see a default rep. What is a default rep? A default rep is the representation that you want to open automatically when you open the assembly. So the default of the default rep is master rep. So when you first install Creo and you open assemblies, it defaults to opening the complete assembly. But you can set a default rep for specific assemblies and say, no, no, we're going to load in a specific uh, representation right and uh, to do that you can redefine actually let's cancel here um, you can load in your master rep right as an example and let's select a component and then just exclude it and then when you go to save you see here simplified rep you have an option to save this rep as the default rep Okay, and then the next time you open that assembly, it'll automatically exclude that component or any number of items. Uh, a lot of companies have it so that a specific arrangement of a default rep is created for their complex assemblies. So that's just some of the ways you can create a simplified rep, save it. And then after you've saved your assembly, the next time you open a representation, it will be that simplified rep you created will be included in the list. Let's take a look at automatic representations. So we will go ahead and take a look at the PBOT. So this is called a packed bot, a little remote control robot. Similar to what I did with the train assembly, I'll go ahead and load it up. The master rep. Okay, so that took uh, probably the same amount of time. It, even though the um, assembly is uh, smaller, it does have um, close to 2,300, or sorry, uh, close to 2,000 components. So it's smaller in size, but not necessarily in complexity. Now, if we look at the model tree here, and we'll um, expand the subassembly, and we expand the components, here is the feature tree. Now, instead of loading on the master assembly, what I'm going to do is load up an automatic representation. So to do that, we'll go ahead and go to the uh, PBOT and then actually we would open, similar to what we were doing before, find that assembly. And then if you go to open, you can select open automatic. Now that's going to open up a bit faster. And when it does, 
what we'll do is we'll go and examine the model tree so that you can see uh, what it is loading. So let's close up this notification. Now, do the same thing we did earlier. We'll expand the model tree and then we'll look at the component. And when I expand the component, you'll see that uh, the model tree does not have the features because the features were not loaded in. Instead, if we hover over uh, surfaces here, you'll see that it says light surface ID. This is essentially a shell, right? Now, if you go into uh, analysis, uh, let's take a look here. What's this component? Uh, that's this piece right here on the interior. Uh, let's see, maybe this component might be helpful. So for this component, right, let's say we have to make a measurement and get the diameter. Um, Okay, so I'll pick on this edge here. So we get diameter, um, let's select an edge, there we go. So you can make measurements, you can examine. In the background, if Creo needs some kind of information loaded in for the component, it will do so automatically to um, let you uh, accomplish the analysis that you're doing. You can also uh, load in specific components on demand. So let's go ahead and do that, right? So here, if you select a component, you can activate it and that'll automatically load in the uh, features as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So when you activate, it goes ahead and loads in the features. You do what you need to do. You reactivate the top level assembly. And then uh, what you can do, and here we have that uh, component, the shell, the front shell has all the features. To reset the model, you can go to manage session and erase unused model reps. And what happens is uh, it'll go ahead and clear out the features that it no longer needs and set it back to that basic completely lightweight uh, version of the assembly and all its components. Now, before I move on um, to showing you shrink wraps and envelopes, I did want to show you some uh, hint or some suggestions for getting around and working with your uh, large assemblies. When you're working with your large assemblies, you have more components. And so finding things and navigating through uh, the assembly can be a bit troublesome. So here's some things that you can do. First off, if you know what the component is called, right? Uh, let's go ahead and say maybe here's a small component, a wire clip. But if you didn't know where the wire clips were, either in the model tree or in the uh, graphics window, you can use your model tree search up here. And that does two things for us. So instead of using the, um, the search or the find tool that I was using earlier, you can use the uh, model tree search, put in the name of the component, and you see what it's doing already is that it's graying out all the other components and then highlighting the components that match the name. See, so it's a lot easier to see. And if there's a specific wire clip in a subassembly from the model tree, you can click on it and then there's a little zoom to selected icon. And you can, uh, usually you can use that in the um, graphics window. I see that's what a lot of folks do. So it allows them to zoom, but you can do it from the model tree too. So if you know the name of the component, you know what subassembly it's in, but you don't recall where it is in the graphics window, you can do two, two, uh, zoom to selected from the model tree and it'll go ahead and do that and readjust the graphics window to zoom in as well. Another thing is that if you have a component, you can select it either in the model tree or in the graphics window. And if you're not quite sure where it fits in the overall structure of the assembly, right? What sub assembly is it uh, located in? What does it report to? There's a select from parents uh, command in the mini toolbar. And it allows you to go from the feature that you selected to the component to whatever the subassembly is. So it's a good way to get around the um, parent-child relationships in your assembly. OK. 
Okay. So next, uh, so that's simplified reps, automatic reps, and some hints as to how to get around your large assembly. Now let's take a look at uh, shrink wraps and um, substitute envelopes, which is another uh, technique that you can use to help simplify large assemblies and their manipulation. Okay, so what's what's another situation of complex assembly? So sometimes what happens is you end up with an assembly that has a lot of components, but it doesn't necessarily have a lot of components that you uh, need to worry about, um, especially if you're dealing with a mechanical design. So the, the, the more prominent example that I'm thinking of is the case where you have a um, enclosure, right, or a design, and uh, sub-assemblies that are included in there are electrical boards, right? Now, these board sub-assemblies have tons of components, right? Here's a simplified example, but uh, board sub-assemblies can have thousands of components that you as a designer do not care about. All you need is some kind of um, a standing or representation to show you what volume it takes up, its shape, but you don't not need all those features and all those components in your model tree, slowing things down. So in Creo, what you can do is uh, you can take that board sub-assembly, like the one we, here, we have here on the left, and then in that assembly create what's called an envelope or a simple uh, version or part that will represent the uh, sub-assembly, and then you can swap it into the larger sub-assembly. Okay, so the idea is that you can use shrink wrap envelopes to replace complex sub-assemblies um, in a higher level, top level assembly. All right. So let's take a look at how to do that. Now here, uh, one envelope here, we have a, what's called a shrink wrap, which is just the outside surfaces, right? And then here we have another option where you basically replace the sub-assembly with a block uh, that takes up the, the space that the board uses as well. So let's take a look at how you can go ahead and go about doing that. So let's open up that housing example. So this is a sub-assembly of a larger assembly. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, actually, let's, let's take a look here. OK. So right now, this uh, housing sub-assembly has simply two components, but it also has this board sub-assembly. And if you expand it, now that board includes all these other components that we probably don't care too much about um, if we're doing enclosure work. We just need to know the outside shape of the board. So one technique is you can open up the sub assembly, okay, and you can create an envelope shrink wrap part. How do you do that? You go to your manage views drop down, and then there's an envelope manager option here, okay, and then you can create a new one. Now, what are we going to include in this envelope part that we're going to swap out the more complex subassembly for? We're going to go and include all the uh, components for this example. You can be selective. And then we'll create our envelope part. Now, there's different methods to do this, right? You could do a solid, uh, sorry, a, uh, a shrink wrap, right, of all the solid surfaces. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, let's copy the template. Okay, so we'll use our metric template here. And then we've got our shrink wrap options. So right now it's going to auto collect all the outside surfaces, right? And in the options, we can um, make changes. We'll go ahead and do an automatic update. So that's going to maintain a link between the sub assembly and then the envelope part. So if there's an update, one of the components is deleted, its position is changed, the um, envelope that's going to replace it will update automatically as well. Okay, so now we've done it. 
go ahead and click on open and what does this do it adds a part to the model tree of the subassembly an envelope part okay so this envelope part uh, does not get added to the bill of materials but it can be used to uh, swap out at the higher level assembly let's see how you do that go back to the housing um, you can expand the model tree of the subassembly right click on that envelope part and tell Creo use that envelope part instead of using all the components and it does it goes ahead and excludes all the components right the subassembly is there but not everything's loaded up and I can uh, give you a section view just so that you can verify that so if I zoom in you see how it's just outside shell lightweight and it definitely will not bog down the computer now because I did that because I swapped out the subassembly and I'm utilizing that envelope that we created the master rep has changed so you can actually save this master rep as a, a simplified PCB board version and then use that at a higher level as well so you can see how at lower uh, at, in sub assemblies you can control what gets included what gets excluded and then you can use that to swap out for different versions of it uh, as well so let's do shrink wrap PCB like that and then if I were to open up the higher level assembly which is this camera right I can go to the sub assembly here and set the representation to user defined and then I'll have my example here shrink wrap PCB and now that's going to load in the shrink wrap envelope that we created and then that could be saved as a rep or the default rep So now that we've looked at some techniques you can use in Creo, uh, let's go and talk about some suggestions for the computer hardware that you'll be running. Okay, some general recommendations that we have. Uh, first of all, the CPU should be as fast as possible on single thread performance. Uh, Creo util uh, utilizes single thread, so the better performance you have there, the, uh, the more it will be the more we'll be able to handle large assemblies. As far as RAM's concerned, the more the better, and the faster the better. In fact, if you don't have enough RAM, there will be some assemblies you cannot open. A graphics card, eight gigabytes, the more the better, the faster the better, similar to RAM. And it has to be a workstation card limited to NVIDIA Quadro, AMD Fire Pro. Um, now, besides those three items, integration is important. So what do I mean by that? Um, I mean, you should follow the, there's actually PTC hardware configurations that are already tested and validated. Uh, now those can get out of date, but you should definitely use those, use those as a starting point. And um, also, I will say that integration is important because upgrading hardware on old systems does not guarantee performance improvement. So if you simply throw in a uh, upgraded quantity of RAM into an older computer, that's not going to make necessarily make things faster for you in Creo because everything has to be integrated and tested and validated and tuned. So uh, there are businesses that actually specialize, specialize in specking out and putting together workstations for your CAD needs. Um, I would recommend looking into those because uh, those are experts at actually not only selecting the right components but also making sure that they're put together and tuned so that they work in conjunction with, with each other and also note that uh, solid states solid state hard drives uh, will make Creo snappier what I mean by snappier is the program will load up faster uh, it may um, load in or respond quicker but it will not fix performance limiters such as graphics cards or RAMs or RAM. Uh, some more notes in this regard. So we'll talk about Creo. Uh, so you know, let's say you do have the best hardware 
on uh, available at the at the and you have gone to the trouble of making sure it's integrated correctly even doing that there might be some um items that will limit your performance that you want to check on so first off is creo settings like we mentioned at the beginning there's a lot of configuration options so we'll take a look at how you can adjust those uh, best practices so if you're not using simplified reps if you are loading in the master uh, models and making some other mistakes that i'll talk about in a little bit uh, that will slow down your uh, large assembly performance graphics card uh, make sure you have the correct drivers sometimes the latest drivers are not the best drivers uh, integration like we mentioned before uh, check on windows updates um, make sure that you do not have competing software running at the same time. What do I mean by that? Any software that uses the resources that Creo uses running in the background will slow things up. Um, security. There have been cases where we worked with customers that had computers that were running really slow and it had to do with security um, programs and background scans that were on constantly. Um, make sure that any Creo and windshield related processes and executables are whitelisted so that they are not constantly blocked or slowed up by the uh, security programs put in by IT. And also check your network connection. If you're using Creo in conjunction with a PDM tool like windshield, uh, that PDM tool will be relaying information back and forth to the server and a slow network connection can uh, limit performance for Creo. So let's take a look at those config.pro settings. This is a list of the different settings that you can um, set and their settings that you can um, place to help with large assembly performance. So here on the left, we have some items that you can turn off by default. For example, the different um, coordinate systems and planes and points, you can make sure that those do not load up. Uh, you can uh, set Creo so that when it opens an assembly, it gives you the simplified rep list that you can select from. Turn off highlighting, pre-highlight, items like that. The column in the middle are uh, items that you can adjust that will help with rotation and zoom performance. So for example, you can um, make it so that it will adjust the shade quality to a lower level and uh, you can turn off items when you're spinning the model so that it's not trying to maintain all the detail as you're spinning or moving the model about. And then on the right drawings specifically, some items that will, or some configure, uh, de drawing detail options that will let you, uh, for example, load in simplified versions of the drawing. Now, when you're making changes to config.pro settings, it's our suggestion that you um, make the changes, make the configuration settings changes one at a time right and then make sure that they don't cause any issues so you know add them in slowly and validate each one now uh, modeling practices best practices in general to help with a uh, large assembly performance first off is simplify simplify your models try your best to maintain a clean and uh, smaller model tree right use as few features as possible uh, avoid assembly level cut features. These create external references and bog down performance. And clean up your models. So at the assembly level, get rid of circular references. These slow up the um, Creo. Uh, reduce suppressed and hidden components, right? So if you suppress a component, it's still out there in the back, uh, and or if you just hide a component, they're still look, lurking in the background, eating up resources as Creo regenerates and tries to validate. Uh, instead, use interchange assemblies and the simplified reps that we talked about, and then go back and get rid of features you don't need. So sometimes people suppress or hide and then forget. Uh, if you don't need those anymore, uh, delete them, get rid of them. And uh, DEX, another extension called the Design Exploration Extension, could be an option for exploring design changes instead. That might be a topic for another Power Hour session, but a lot of times people will end up with a lot of suppressed items in their model tree or hidden components because they're trying things out, because they're trying to see maybe a different component arrangement or something of the sort, and then that builds a, a model tree that has 
needless uh, complexity. There is a, an extension called Dex um, that helps you explore design options, but will um, create a specialized session that will keep track of the changes so that you don't have to uh, keep adding components to the model tree. And then lastly, I will mention that if uh, you need to open a model, but all you're doing is viewing or measuring, not making any design changes, there is a viewer app called Creo View that you can use instead. So what you could do is select, or you could save a um, simplified version of the assembly as a PVZ file, and then open that with Creo View. And it's purely for viewing the model, for um, taking it apart, for measuring, and it loads up and manipulates much, much faster. So this is a good option for folks that don't need to make design changes day to day as well on large assemblies. Uh, I will note some sources that I used that actually go into more detail. There's a uh, PDF presentation or a PowerPoint presentation called Bringing Large Models Down to Size by Stephen Lafa Jr., uh, who worked at NASA. That's a great resource to search for online. And then there is an advanced assembly design training course provided by PTC that goes into detail and depth uh, with all the tools that we presented here um, and all the options uh, when using them. Hope this session has been useful and uh, giving you some options to help manipulate your large assemblies. And hopefully we'll see you in our next Power Hour session.